I've read stories about such things. I always assumed that this was just a fiction and nothing like this would ever happen, at least to me. So imagine my surprise that evening when my almost 20 year old wife said to me at dinner, darling, we need to talk. My heart jumped into my throat and I immediately tensed up, preparing for the worst. Did she cheat on me? Did she want a divorce? What could it be? Where did we go wrong? I stared at her across the dining table, my hands shaking. To talk, I asked, trying my best to speak calmly. Talk about what? Well, first of all, I want to tell you that I love you, she said, and took a sip of wine, as if she wanted to calm her nerves. I noticed that she didn't eat much. I stared at her, trying to analyze her movements, her expression, anything that would give me at least some clue to what was about to happen. I couldn't stand attention for long and blurted out, Did you cheat on me, Maggie? Her face twitched and she looked at me with big, surprised eyes. No, of course not, she replied. I would never cheat on you, although the way she emphasized the word cheating made me nervous. I seemed to breathe a sigh of relief. Well, if it's not cheating, then what is it? Are you leaving me, I ask, fearing the worst. Oh my god, George, she said. Where did you get those thoughts from? Of course I won't leave you. Okay, I replied. I love you too. Maggie's eyes lit up and she smiled warmly at me. Me too, George. Then, what's the matter? Are you feeling unwell, I ask, increasingly worried about Maggie's health. I'm fine, darling, she assured me. I didn't mean to scare you, but it seems to me that something has been wrong between us for a long time. Now that Meredith has gone to college, everything looks different. Maybe it's empty nest syndrome or a midlife crisis or something like that, but we seem to be stuck in some kind of rut. I felt a little relaxed, but I was still feeling anxious, wondering what was bothering Maggie. A track, how is that, I asked. Well, well, we spend so much time at work that we don't have much time for each other. Your job often forces you to leave town, and my job often keeps me in the office late. When we're not working, we both get tired. When was the last time we did this? When was the last time we did this? I repeated her question. To be honest, I couldn't remember the last time it was. Maggie hadn't wanted to do this for a long time. I had to settle for the pleasure of being alone for several months. It's been a while, but every time I start something even remotely personal, you shut me down. You'll always have one excuse or another. That's right, Maggie agreed. I know, I usually get very tired when you want to frolic, but when we were young, we didn't care if we were tired or not. We did this three or four times a week. Now it happens every three to four months. If that's the case, I replied, agreeing with her. So what? My irritation was growing. It sounded like she was blaming me for not having a bed when she always said no. If it were up to me, we would do it often. And I want to get out of this rut we're in, she said. I want to settle everything between us so that we can stay together for the rest of our lives. We're bored, George. We need to stop being bored. I'm not bored, I said. There are a lot of worries in my life. Excitement? Really? What are you going to do tonight, she asked with a wry smile. Watch the curse of Oak Island. They say they're going to make a big discovery tonight, I replied, considering her words. Don't they say they only find dirt and pieces of wood every week? Well, yes, I admitted. More or less. Like I said, she chuckled, it's boring. Okay, it's not boring. It's convenient. It's convenient for us. That's what happens when you've been married as long as we have. Make yourself comfortable. I don't need comfort, Maggie explained. When we first got married, you came to bed every night in the mood. You haven't done this in years. Is that all? I asked putting down my fork. Do you want me to do this? Pull down your pants and bend over the table. 
Now I'm going to make you regret what you said. It's not exactly what I was thinking, George. To be honest, I'm just as uninterested in sleeping with you as you are with me. It's just a place where we are in our lives. We've lost a spark, and that worries me. We are already over 40. We still have many years ahead of us. I'm afraid that if we've already lost this romantic interest in each other, what will we have left in a few years? How can we stay together? We will stay together because we are husband and wife. This is what husbands and wives do. We are used to each other. We are comfortable. And who says I'm not interested in sleeping with you? Of course, I'm interested. We've become roommates. George, nice neighbors. I think we're more than neighbors. I mean, we do it from time to time and we love each other. So, we are roommates with infrequent benefits. Yes, I love you, George. And I know that you love me. But can you honestly tell me that you still love me, that you still love me, that you still love me the same way you did when we got married in the Stone Age? This is completely different, I tried to explain, like a good wine. Over the years, our love has matured and softened. We have grown older and our desire is no longer as active as it used to be. Don't you want to feel that feeling and thrill of chemistry again like before? She said, taking my hand. I don't know, Maggie, but I like the way things are right now. I mean, of course, I'd like to do this more often. But I like to come home and hang out with you, quietly and peacefully. We've been working hard to get to where we are. It's like that damn hammock in the backyard, there for almost twenty years. Every year I told myself that soon I would be able to just lie down, relax and read a book. Well, now that I'm finally going to get into this thing, you tell me you want to get rid of the hammock. Maggie stared at me, considering my words, then shook her head. I don't understand this, but I'm not asking you to give up anything, dear. I'm saying that, in my opinion, we need to revive our romance. Revive our love life before it's too late. My desire is not dead, it is just dormant. I want to feel what we felt when we were doing it. When it was new, fresh and exciting, as if we couldn't get enough of it or each other. So you're saying that our bed doesn't feel as good as it used to? No, I'm not saying that at all. You're a wonderful, caring and talented lover when we're doing this. You always know how to make me feel good. And I've never once pretended to like what I like. The problem is not that our bed is bad, but that we never want to do it. What are you saying? I ask. I'm confused. I'm saying I want more. I feel like we're not lovers anymore. We're just partners. I want to feel your love again. I want to feel like I love you again. I want intrigue. I want wishes. I want romance. I want to do this. I thought you said you didn't want to do this. Do you want it or not? I want to want it. It looks like you want to be young again. Are you sure it's not your hormones? Do you have hot flashes? Don't do this, George. Don't oversimplify my feelings. And don't make me a woman with hormonal problems. Every time I get upset, I don't have PMS. And just because I want to rekindle our love doesn't mean I'm going through menopause. Um, I'm sorry. You're right. It was insensitive. I'm just trying to figure out where it all came from all of a sudden. Darling, this is not so unexpected. I've been thinking about it for a long time. I'm afraid that if we don't do something drastic to restart our relationship, our marriage won't survive. She looked like she was about to cry. I heard what she was saying. To be honest, she sounded like she was on autopilot. Well, if it's not sudden, I asked angrily, then why are you only talking about it now? Why didn't you try to talk to me about this before? It took me a long time to get to this point, she explained. But I'm talking about it now. I didn't want it to keep festering. Maybe there was something in what she was saying. I loved Maggie and was ready to do anything to make her happy and improve our relationship. Okay, I'm listening. 
I can tell you've been thinking about it a lot and it's important to you. What do you want to do? Should we go to a marriage counselor? I read about someone named Personal Life Coach. Should I try to find him? That's a great idea, she said with a smile, wiping a tear from her cheek. Thanks for the offer. I think we should try it. But I've been thinking about other things we could do. Like what? Well, first, let me ask you something. Your company is a creative agency, right? You keep telling me that you're one of the best at what you do. Yes, we are among the top two in the state. And maybe the top five in the country. Why? What does this have to do with our personal lives? Do you hire the best people? Of course, yes. And how many of these people have been working in your company for, say, 20 years? No one. The company has been in existence for only six years. We are constantly attracting new talent. Our industry has a large turnover. Right. So you're always acquiring new talents, new ideas, new ways of doing things. Yes, we are very creative. We have an ever-evolving way of working. And people always bring new skills and new energy, making things better for everyone. Yes, that's right. Where are you going with all this? George, it's been 20 years since we got married next month. Before that, we had been dating exclusively for three years. In all this time, I have never cheated on you. And as far as I know, you have never cheated on me. This means that for almost 23 years, we have been doing this only with each other. You were my first. And from what you've told me, you've only had two girlfriends before me. That's right, I said, starting to worry again about where this was going to lead. My stomach was clenching. So what? Well, would you hire a person to work in your company if he had learned his skills 23 years ago and had not taken any lessons, had no new ideas or new education? Would you like employees to practice what you do only once every few months? Would your company be the best if everyone didn't try to be the best and kept climbing to new and higher levels? What? Of course not. But this is completely different. It's a job. We're talking about us. What exactly do you mean by that? Um, I mean, 23 years ago, we had advanced skills. We had a great bed. We've been doing this all the time. It was new and fun. It was exciting. Well, then Meredith came along and we changed. We became parents, then professionals, then soccer moms and basketball coaches. We've developed our skills as parents and in our careers. But we haven't done anything to develop our skills with each other. We continue to do everything the same. Conveniently, as always. The way we found out 23 years ago. It has become stale. The novelty has disappeared. We got bored. It has become a routine. We've lost the spark. What are you saying, Maggie? I'm saying I don't need comfort, George. I hate comfort. I'm sick of comfort. I want a new one. I want excitement. I want to learn new skills and become a better lover. I want to use this to rekindle the fire between us. Turn our boring, comfortable life upside down. I want to fall in love again. I need a lover, not a roommate. I want to feel it again. I need it. Okay, I muttered. I was shaking all over. I don't know if it's from excitement or adrenaline. Maybe it was my struggle or the flight protection that went into overdrive. I will do everything in my power to give you passion. We can have date nights and do whatever you want. I won't be watching TV that much. And we may have hobbies or something we can do together. We can travel more. You always love to travel. So why don't we go somewhere every month? Even if it's just an overnight stay in a hotel in one of the new trendy areas of the city. Maggie took my hand in hers and kissed it. Then shook her head. George, I know you'd move a mountain for me if you could. I know you think these things will help. But in the end, 
it's still us doing them. We're all the same. Nothing will change. And soon we will get bored of it too. These ideas are a good step. But they're still too convenient. We don't learn or experience anything new. So what are you talking about? I followed you. But now you're losing me. What do you suggest we do? Go to a resort to learn new skills in bed or somewhere else. Oh, my God, no. She said in disgust. I would never be able to go to a place like this. I couldn't handle people trying to get us to join them for a casual bed. No, nothing like that. Then what? I asked, getting more and more upset. Well, I think we need something like a head shock. A kind of reboot. Something new and exciting that will give our romance a boost and bring the spark back into our personal lives. At that moment, I was ready to accept almost everything she offered. That sounds great. I'm all for it. I think I should start dating others. Anything but that. Wow, 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 I said, taking my hands away from my wife and looking at her. Frowning. Say it again. I don't think I heard you. I said that I need to start dating others. Yes. Fine. It turns out I heard everything correctly the first time, I said, leaning back in my chair at the kitchen table. Then I leaned forward and looked at my wife as if she had lost her mind. Are you crazy? She seemed surprised by my reaction. No, no, not at all. I've been thinking about it a lot. I think that's what we need. Maggie, you've had some crazy ideas before, but this is too much. I don't think it's crazy, George. You'll understand too if you let me explain my reasoning. Yes, please explain. Explain how you want to improve our relationship and light a spark in our personal life by cheating on me. George, I'm not going to cheat on you, she said. That's not what I'm suggesting. Do you want to date other men like you date other men besides me? Yes, that's right. How is a real romantic date? Yes, that's the point. And a real date. How would you be with someone if we weren't married? I didn't think about it in those terms. But yes, it is. A real date. So, is he going to do this with you on the first date? Or are you going to make him wait until the fifth? Like you did with me. George, I didn't say anything about doing this with him. Yes, but you said a real, real date. Like you're not married. And on real dates, people do it. So, you're saying that bed is completely excluded from your list of dates? Well, no. I'm not saying that. So, you're going to do it? Uh, I didn't say that either. I just want to say that I would be open to seeing where dating is going and how relationships are developing. A relationship? So, not only do you want to date some guy or guys. You want to do it with them and develop a relationship with them. You're only dodging to point out what you want to point out, George. Yes or no, Maggie. Would you ever do this with your boyfriends? She hesitated. It's not that black and white. Yes or no? Yes. Probably so. Then, it's treason. No. It's not like that. What? Do you think it's not cheating? You're dating some guy. You're having a romantic date with him. And you're doing it. This is treason. I was furious. I was also losing my temper quickly. Things could have gone very badly if I hadn't been careful. Maggie tried to pull herself together and stay calm. It annoyed her whenever I lost my temper. It was as if she was trying to show me that she was more civilized than me. It won't be cheating. She reasoned. Because you'll give me your consent and approval. And you'll know everything about who I've been with and what I've been doing. We'll share all the details after I get home. Oh, my God. God, I shouted. Emphasizing every word. Not only do you want to cheat on me. 
But you also want to completely make me watch it. What makes you think that I would ever agree to you dating or approve of you? Doing it with someone else. What came into your head that made you lose all understanding of reality? Do you really think I'm going to settle for this filth? George, please try to stay calm so we can talk. No need to shout. And no need to be vulgar. You are welcome. I stared at her. Did you really think that I would agree? I knew it would be hard for you to accept. But you love me. And you're a reasonable person. You're a smart guy. I assumed and still believe that you would calm down, understand the logic of what is happening and agree to support me. Support you? Yes. While you're doing it with other men. George, it's not about touching other men. If I just wanted to do this, believe me, I could do it for years with many men. I could even do it with your brother, your best friends and your boss. They all pestered me many, many times. But I didn't do it. I would never cheat on you. I would never do that to you. But you're offering to do it right now. No, honey, she tried to correct me. This is not a hoax. It's not for me. This is for us. It will bring us excitement, fun and new adventures. Our personal life will come alive again. I'm going to live again. You will feel it and become a part of it. Are we doing this together? What? Do you want me to go on dates with you? Well, no. I meant figuratively, not literally. You're going to stay at home and wait for me to go on a date. And then when I get home, I'll tell you every last detail. I suppose you want me to do it on you after you do it with him. She literally blushed. I couldn't believe it. But she really wanted me to do it. Well, I mean, that would be the best way to show me your love. It's going to be a cold day in hell before I ever do that, I told her icily. Okay, we can skip that part, she suggested. If you don't want to ruin our marriage, you're not just going to miss this. It won't destroy our marriage. You're doing this with another man, period. It's not going to be love, George. I'll save it for you. I love you. I don't like him. It's just going to be a bed. Just the bed? Yes, just a bed. I stared at her in silence for a few seconds. What does that even mean? It means that I won't have any feelings for him. And he won't have any feelings for me either. We just want to explore each other personally. Nothing else. Just a bed, I repeated, thinking over her words. Yes. So, let me make sure that I understand everything. Okay, take your time. You just want to go to bed with another man, I said slowly. If anything, yes, she confirmed. So, why is that? Why do you just want to go to bed with someone else? She didn't have a ready answer. I. Which means I'm not enough for you. It means that I'm not getting you what you need. You're not satisfied with having sex with me, and you want to try to find someone better. Wait. No, Maggie exclaimed. It's not like that at all. I love sleeping with you. You are a great lover. I don't want anyone better. If that were true, I explained judiciously. Then you wouldn't be looking for someone else. The only reason you want to go to bed with someone else, if it's just a bed, is to upgrade to find someone better than what you have. That's not true at all, she countered, not backing up her statement. Oh, of course, I said. Think about it. If you love sushi and have found the best sushi place in the world, and this sushi place is next door, but there are 20 other sushi places in the city, why would you waste your time? Trying 20 other places when you already have the best sushi right here. She thought for a few seconds, then replied, probably to try other sushi. But why? If you know that this place is the best, would you like to go somewhere where you know it won't be as good or satisfy you the way it should? I asked rhetorically and continued. Of course not. You would try other places only if part of you thought that it could get better, that in some sense, 
one of the other places could be better than the one you love. I really don't understand, she said, looking a little unhappy. If it's just a bed, then why do you want to do it with someone else? If you're satisfied with our life, if I make you happy, then if all you want is just a bed, why not just do it with me? We rarely do this. So if you just want to do it more, then we can do it more often. But no, you'd rather do it with someone else who might be better but might be worse. Obviously, you want to do it with someone else because it's not just a bed or you're not happy doing it with me. Do you think he could be better? I don't know, she replied, confused. You're confusing me, but you're not. Okay, so it's just a bed, right? Yes, how many times do I have to repeat this? Yes, it's just a bed. Okay, if that's true, then I have a solution. I grinned. She seemed to perk up and there was a spark of hope in her eyes. What is it? If all you want is a bed, then I'm willing to let you have it. She seemed stunned. Ye, will you let me? Yes, I'll find a man for the evening and hire him to come here and do this to you, I said. He will be a specialist in pleasing women. I'll take one with a big friend, a black one if you want, and a health certificate so he can do it without protection. Then you can do your own bed. A man for the evening. Why do I need a man for the evening? Are you crazy? Because it's just a bed, I retorted. If it's just a bed, then who it is shouldn't matter. He's just an anonymous friend for you to enjoy. In fact, this is a much better option. Since he's a random person, you won't have the slightest chance to recognize him. It's going to be bam, bam. You, sir, and he's going to leave. You'll get your bed. So you can't risk physical intimacy leading to unexpected feelings. You're talking about me as easily accessible. I don't want to do this with some unknown gigolo. I need some kind of connection with this person. I'm not just a piece of meat. Exactly, I grinned. It means that it's not just about the bed. You don't just want a bed. You don't just want a bed. You want more. You want to have sex with a specific person because you have some chemistry with them. Her face turned red again, and she couldn't answer. Okay, maybe that's partly true. But that doesn't mean anything. I couldn't help but laugh. What? A, it doesn't mean anything. For me, for him, we know it's just a bed thing. He knows that I love you and is not looking for such a relationship. Do you really believe that it doesn't mean anything to you? I know. Then if it doesn't mean anything, why do it? A, A. Maggie, you don't make any sense. Why would you do something if you know it doesn't mean anything? If it doesn't mean anything, then you don't want to do it. You want to do this to him precisely because it really means something. She put her head in her hands and moaned. It definitely doesn't mean anything. It means a lot to me. You know perfectly well that bed is the highest form of intimacy. When we got married, we agreed to have only this level of intimacy with each other. You want to throw it away to experiment with someone else. You want to explore this intimacy with someone you have a connection with besides me. You are not satisfied with this intimacy with me. And you do not like our personal life. So you want an update. No, that's not the point, she said. So you're hoping to do this with him to make sure he's not as good as me. Does he have a smaller item than me? Can't I make you happy in the end? She just looked at me. Of course not, I said sharply. You wouldn't go into this if you thought it could be the same or worse than me. You only want to do this because you hope. No, because you already suspect that it will be much better than what we have. You like it. Thinking about how good it can be. I don't know, she shouted. I've never thought about it that way. You've completely confused me. And what happens when you finish and come to my house after he makes you happier than I am? Have you thought about that? I, I, she began but hesitated. I've never thought about it. What do you mean? 
I mean, how can you expect your feelings for me to be the same after you've had a better bed with someone else? You claim you're doing this to spice up our personal lives. But if he's better than me, you'll.